if it isn't too much trouble, could we possibly have your attention for the next half an hour so that we can tell you how to make polite requests in English? Would you mind doing that? Do you think you could possibly, if you would be so kind? Welcome to Aprender Inglés with Reza and Craig. Hi, I'm Reza. And my name's Craig. And with nearly 50 years of teaching between us, we'll help you improve your English and take it to the next level. Well, if you don't mind me asking, Craig, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for asking. How are you, if you don't mind me asking? Um, thanks very much for asking. I'm very well, indeed. <laughs> Today we're looking at how to make polite requests and be very indirect and very British when we're asking for things. If you're a new listener to the podcast, you're very, very welcome. And if you've come back from a previous episode, thank you for joining us. First this week, we have a voice message from our friend Lucas from Brazil. <laughs> Hello, guys. This is Lucas from Brazil. Firstly, I want to say thank you because you put a lot of my audios in the last episodes. And today I received my review from Spotify about 2020. And I saw that uh, I listened the podcast that I, I have listened more is English podcast. I listen for 15,000 minutes during this year. And my my record, the day I listen to your podcast more than the others, I listen 15 episodes in one day. Yes, can you believe it? So thank you guys for your service. And it's all, folks. <laughs> It's always a pleasure hearing from Lucas and 15,000 minutes on Spotify. How many hours is that? Oh, divide by divide by 60. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot of hours. Do you use Spotify? Because I didn't know that you could get a report over the year of your listening habits. That's really good. I had no idea. I'm going to do that now, Lucas. I had no idea you could do that. And 15 episodes in one day. Well, you are definitely an aircoholic, Lucas. A-I-R-C, Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. You are an aircoholic, definitely. Thanks for listening to us for so long and, and not committing suicide. I don't know how you do it. And better to be an aircoholic than an alcoholic. I mean, 15 pints a day or 15 episodes of, of us. Better to listen to the podcast, isn't it? Yeah, you'll, you'll get a better job, you'll improve your English, you'll do lots of things with listening to us. So thanks very much for your persistence. Can I just say one little thing, Lucas, that you could improve? I don't think you made any mistakes there, but you said that you listened to us more than the others. Okay, but it would be just easier to say you listen to us the most. It'd be much easier, superlative, the most, much quicker, much better. Next, we have a voice message from Antonio, who has some advice for you language learners. Hi, Chaps. Uh, thank you for your brilliant work. I think the best way to thank you is by recording this message. I've been listening to your podcast for some time now, and I think it's been uh, worth it. Uh, I would like, uh, if I may, to give some advice to my learning colleagues. I've been listening to the episodes while walking the dog or commuting to work, which is excellent, but it's a passive way of learning. To really get the most out of the content, my advice would be to listen to them again and focus on the grammar, word stress and vocabulary, especially for those words or, or constructions you might be most interested in trying to write them down and creating vocabulary flashcards, for example, to go over them from time to time. In other words, uh, take the plans and become active learners. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Antonio, for sending us that advice that we have now passed on to everybody listening to the podcast. And very, very good advice it was. Any comments? 
My advice, you want to improve your English? Uh, do what Antonio said. I can't add anything to that. He mentioned all the important things. And I like the expression he used to get the most out of something or to make the most out of something. Aprovechar in Spanish, to get the most out of something. Do you think Lucas gets the most out of this podcast? I certainly do. <laughs> 15 episodes a day, yes. <laughs> He has definitely taken the plunge, which was another lovely expression that Antonio used, to take the plunge. If you throw yourself into a swimming pool, you plunge into the swimming pool, P-L-U-N-G. So to take the plunge is to go all in, to commit yourself, to do it 100%. For example, I've decided, Reza, that from next year, I'm going to take the plunge and start a new diet and do more exercise. I've decided I'm going to be very strict and I'm going to take the plunge and start a new diet. Sorry, I, 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 a kind of smile is beginning to break over my face because <laughs> every time just before the new year, I Craig know. says this and yeah, and he normally does keep his word until February for a few months, yeah. We're recording this podcast at the end of December, so it's time for New Year's resolutions and reflection on the year gone by. So are you going to take the plunge in anything new next year? My idea is to do more regular exercise. I do some exercise, most mornings a bit, but it's not enough. I need to be more disciplined and do exercise first thing in the morning every single day. That's what I'm going to do. So you're going to take the plunge. Yeah. Last week, we spoke about the beautiful country of New Zealand. If you have not heard that, go to englishpodcast.com slash 344. And this week, we have a message from our friend Roberto from a country very close to New Zealand, the lovely country of Australia. And Alberto has sent us an email. Could you read it, Reza? Alberto writes, could it be possible that you guys talk in one episode about how non-English speakers can send a clear message to someone, but without sounding bossy. Bossy's mandona, mandona. Sometimes when I need to send a message to someone, in my mind I try to disconnect the Spanish way to ask for things, because... As you might know, we usually use the direct way without any polite words. Example, pass me the salt. So he's talking about in Spanish, right? Pásame la sal. But English is another world. Good manners are on top of anything. Even if you need to command an order, better to say give an order. You're quite right, Alberto. He continues, recently I was trying to send a message to someone that I did not have much of a relationship with. In other words, an acquaintance, let's say. He wasn't a friend, an acquaintance. And although I used modal verbs, such as could, might, would, that's good to be polite, and the word please, in my mind, it still sounded bossy. Maybe I've become a bit too British, and I'm too sensitive to rudeness. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, because of course Alberto's living and working in Australia. He has been for a few years, but culturally that's one of the things that could be problematic when you're assimilating into a new culture, trying to become part of the culture. The words you use and how you communicate politeness is a tricky thing, isn't it? Yeah, and very important. It doesn't matter how good you are at something. If you don't say it in the right way, you can you can really cause problems. One way of being polite in English is to use indirect questions. Now, we have spoken about this before with our friend Nicola, so we won't repeat that here. If you go to englishpodcast.com slash 50, five zero, you can hear a podcast that explains all about indirect questions with our friend and colleague Nicola. But let's look at some polite requests that can help you and Alberto to ask politely for things in English. What are some of the common ones, Reza? Well, a very important expression to know is, would you mind? Or instead of would, you could say do. Do you mind? Would you mind? Do you mind? If you're going to use a verb after that, it has to be gerund. That's the ing verb. So, for example, would you mind... 
not smoking here, please. Or do you mind opening that window? It is possible not to use a gerund. You can you, you can use a clause as well. You could say, do you mind if I open the window, for example? Or do you mind if I ask you to stop smoking? So there are two ways of doing it, but not infinitive. A typical mistake is to say, do you mind to... No, uh-uh, I-N-G. There's one thing to remember, though, with would you mind or do you mind, is that if you translate it to Spanish, it's te importa, do you mind, or te importaría, would you mind. And then, of course, if the person does not mind and it's okay, they're going to give the answer no. Do you mind if I open a window? No. Go ahead. So you get the negative answer, which really means positive, that they don't mind. It's okay to do it. Would you mind if I sit here? No, go ahead. No, I don't mind. What if somebody asks you something and you don't want them to do it? So let, let's imagine I want to open a window, but Craig doesn't want me to open the window. Let's practice that. Craig, would you mind if I opened this window? Well, actually, I'm feeling cold, so I'd rather you didn't. So I wouldn't necessarily say, yes, I mind. That's very direct. That's very abrupt and then maybe a little bit impolite. So I would use some deferring language, some language that's kind of negative and say, well, actually, I would prefer it if you didn't. Or I'd rather you didn't. That's how I would answer that. But don't start with the word no, as Craig said. If you start with the word no, then the person will open the window. Because that's, that's giving them permission. You've given them permission. You're saying, no, it's not a problem, so they'll do it. As Alberto said in his email, you could use modal verbs to make polite requests. And one example is could. Could you please? For example, could you please keep your voice down? We're recording a podcast. Another example is with can. Can you please? Can you please not sit here? This seat is occupied. Now, sometimes students ask us, is could more polite? Is can more polite? Well, really, could is more polite. However, I think the intonation is more important than the words sometimes. Because if I use a lot of up and down intonation with can you please, it sounds really polite. Can you please pass me the salt? So my voice goes up and it sounds more polite. Could you please not do that? Yeah. In fact, I would add to what Craig says that if you use certain intonation, it can even suggest that you're actually angry and irritated, far from being polite. For example, someone you know very well even a family member, so you don't really have to be indirect and polite to them, do you? Sometimes they would use this expression to show irritation. For example, I remember as a kid, my parents often saying things to me like, could you please shut up? You know? And they might stress the word please. Can you please not do that? But they're not doing it out of politeness. They know me well. They don't need to be polite to me. They're my parents. They're saying, look, we're annoyed with you. Could you please Or we might say to our students, can you please speak in English? And that sounds very angry. That does not sound polite. So perhaps, Alberto, looking at your email, you are using very polite expressions. Maybe you should work a little on your intonation and have that rising, falling intonation that's very typical in English, not so common in Spanish, and that will make your request sound more polite. What other expressions can people use, Reza? Another nice one, again, using modal verbs. Do you think you could, or instead of could, might, do you think you might, for example, Craig, do you think you could just uh, let me borrow that pen? Yes, of course. No problem. Reza, do you think you might send me a copy by email? Certainly. That would be no problem at all. Of course, you can say, do you think you could... Or do you think I could, depending on who is possibly going to do the action? Do you think you could send me a copy? Or do you think I could open the window? I guess technically you could say, with you, it's a request. And with I, it's like asking for For permission, permission, isn't it? Exactly. Or requesting permission, I guess you could say. 
Also for requesting permission, you could use these modal verbs with possibly. So, could I possibly? Notice the intonation there. Could I possibly use the bathroom? Might I possibly go to the toilet? May I possibly sit here with you? Did you notice we, we threw in may there? Could, might, may, they all mean the same in that particular example. But you wouldn't say, do you think you may, would you? It's no. curious. No. So when you, when you want somebody to do something, I want Craig to send me something. I say, do you think you could send me that? Do you think you might send me that? But not may when I'm asking him to do something. That's not very common. Yeah. yeah. Do you think I could, or do you think I might? I suppose you could add may here. Do you, say, do you think I may? But it sounds a bit old fashioned. That's maybe a bit excessive. But it is typical when you begin to use may. May I? In fact, I used that expression, could I possibly, two days ago. I was in Moraida with my sister. My sister's looking for a new house. And an estate agent was showing us this house. And I was with my sister and I really needed to use the bathroom. I really needed to go to the toilet. So I said to the estate agent, and I needed to be polite because it wasn't his house. It was a house of somebody who was not there. I wanted to be very polite. My relationship with the estate agent was not close. He was kind of a stranger. And I said, do you think I could possibly use the bathroom? So I needed to make it very polite because of my relationship with the person and because of the situation I was in. Another nice one is, is it all right if I... It's very common to add the word just as well. The word just has many meanings in English. Just can mean fair. That is a just decision, a fair decision. I've just arrived five seconds ago, recently, but it doesn't mean that here. When in a polite request you add the word just, it's like saying, oh, it's, it's nothing important, taking importance away from things. So, Craig, is it all right if I, if I just uh, go to the bathroom for a minute? Yes, of course. So I'm, I'm asking for permission to leave. If I just go for a minute, it'll be really quick, no problem at all. I, I don't want to trouble you. So the word just is taking away importance, like saying it's no big deal, don't let me trouble you. And in colloquial English, it might be useful in that context to use the phrasal verb to pop in. Is it all right if I just pop into the toilet for a second? Is it all right if I pop over for a cup of tea? So you could use the word pop as well in that situation. Now, sometimes when you want to be polite, the sentences and the requests get quite long. Lots of words. Here's another example. Could you possibly be so kind as to, and then the verb. So you'd use an infinitive with this expression. Could you possibly be so kind as to lend me some money this month? So obviously to use such a long, polite, complicated request, then probably you're asking for a very, very big favor. Or the relationship with the person you're speaking to is very distant. In Spanish, you'd use usted, for example. So there's no close relationship with the person you're speaking to. And also, apart from being distant, a question of how much authority the person has. So the more authority they have, the politer and more indirect. So if I'm speaking to the prime minister... I've never met them before, but for some reason I end up in a situation where I have them. I would say, Prime Minister, could you possibly be so kind as to, because it's the Prime Minister. Or maybe your boss, if you want to be very kind to your boss, very polite. Could you possibly be so kind as to send me the details of this month's pay slip or this month's salary? So you're asking your boss to do you a favour. Of course, you're going to be more polite. And just to stress the idea that you don't want to irritate that person, another nice one is using the word trouble. You don't want to be any trouble. So you say, if it isn't too much trouble, would you mind sending me my recent pay slip? If it isn't too much trouble. That's very polite. Remember, if you want to see these expressions, you can go to the show notes for this episode and there's a list of the examples we're using. Go to inglespodcast.com slash three four five
one more we'll give you. You can use the expression, I wonder if. I wonder, me pregunto. I wonder if you could, or I wonder if it will be possible to, or I wonder if you can. You can also use it in the past tense, past continuous, which is maybe even more polite. I was wondering if I could use the bathroom. So we said before that could is more polite than can. So the past tense is often more polite than the present tense. And with wonder the same. The past tense I was wondering tends to be a little more polite than I wonder. But remember, it's the intonation that really makes it polite. As Craig mentioned earlier, when he introduced, could you possibly be so kind as to... <laughs> so, so, many, so many words. A lot of words, isn't there? You could add even more than that if you want. In, in fact, as a basic kind of rule, the more you add together, the, the politer and more indirect it sounds. But don't go overboard. Overboard means don't exaggerate, you know? For example, this... Yeah, you might say it in a very extremely polite, indirect circumstance. But just to give you an example of adding things together, if it isn't too much trouble, I wonder if you would mind me asking if you think you might possibly be able to give me a hand, please. <laughs> It would be much quicker to say, can you give me a hand, please? Yeah, I mean, my favorite ac one of my favorite acronyms is KISS. K-I-S-S. -S. Just keep it simple, stupid. Just keep it reduced. It's the same idea as the order of adjectives before a noun. You may know that there's a special order of adjectives before a noun. First, you give opinion of something and then maybe the origin or the, the, the color and the material. So these adjectives go in a certain order. But you're not going to have six or seven adjectives before the noun you're probably going to have a maximum of two or three. And it's the same with these expressions. Don't put too many together because it just sounds silly. Craig, there's another technique we can use, isn't there? Yes, you can use question tags for favours and requests. For example, I can say to you, hey, Razor, can you lend me a pen? Or I could say, you couldn't lend me a pen, could you? Remember, with tags, you use the modal verb in the opposite at the end. So if you're saying you couldn't do it, then you need to repeat the positive could. So you couldn't blah, 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 could you? You couldn't lend me your car this weekend, could you? Again, that rising intonation at the end makes it polite. You couldn't lend me 50 euros, Reza, could you? So remember that it's the last bit, which is what you're really asking, could you? So that's the bit needs to be positive because you, you want that to happen, could you? So the first verb is the negative. Don't don't get it the wrong way around. If you said, you could lend me some money, couldn't you? That that doesn't mean no. anything. That would be just Not confusing. for a request. So no. you couldn't lend me 50 pounds, could you? No, I bloody couldn't. You could also use would. You could use would. And this would be useful for quite a large or inconvenient or big request. For example, Reza. You know, I'm going to Paris tomorrow. You wouldn't be able to take me to the airport in the morning, would you? I certainly would. No problem at all. Thank you very much, my friend. I'll repeat that one more time. You wouldn't be able to take me to the airport tomorrow, would you? So you're giving the negative because maybe it's easier for the listener to refuse. Another nice one is with suppose plus could. I don't suppose I could stay at your place for a few days, could I? Of course you could, no problem at all. So notice there that don't suppose is negative, followed by I could positive. But the main verb is don't suppose. So because that's negative, then the tag, the bit at the end, is positive. Could I? Let me just repeat it. I don't suppose I could stay at your place for a few days, could I? Another example with a tag is with shall. For example, let's start the meeting, shall we? Yes, this is an interesting one because you're not going to guess this one. This is irregular. The others have a logic. If the verb was negative in the main part, in the tag use a positive. So wouldn't blah, 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 would you? Couldn't blah, 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 could you? Don't blah, 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 do you? But not with this one. The tag of let's is shall. 
So shall doesn't appear in the first part. It's not shall, it's let's start the meeting, shall we? I suppose you could say, shall we start the meeting? But then you wouldn't repeat shall we at the end. So to avoid that, you say, let's, let's start the meeting, shall we? So the tag for let's is shall. And that's curious because they're both positive. That's the weird thing about this. Let's, shall we? I've got an idea, Reza. Let's give some examples, shall we? Let's. For example, we can give one example with the direct way of asking and then a more polite, indirect way of asking. Let's imagine we're sitting at the table and we're very good friends and you know me very well and you ask me to pass the salt. So ask me for the salt. Okay, I'm going to do this just so you see the contrast. But in real life, I would actually say... Could you pass me the salt, please? But I'm going to do it in a more indirect way because how would you really say it in real life? I would say, can you pass me the salt, please? Or something like that. I would say, yeah, can you pass Can you pass me the salt, please? Yeah. But would you, with your partner, would you be more direct? Uh, or would you still use the modal verb can? Sometimes, yeah. And my mum will still tell me off. She will, you know, say she's unhappy if I don't put please on a request. So I'm having dinner with my mum, who I know pretty well, as you can imagine. And it's still got to be, pass me the salt, please. If I don't have that, please, she'll be annoyed. Or could you pass me the salt, please? You'd say pass the salt, please. But would you add the, could you pass the salt, please? Or can you pass the salt? Sometimes. Sometimes I would just say, pass the salt, please. But on other occasions, I would say, can you pass me the salt, please? Even with my own family members, I would sometimes. Would you, would you not? Yep, I would. With can, I'd say, can Can you pass the salt, please? But again, with that intonation, I would say, can you pass the salt, please? Can you pass the salt, please? But what's a more indirect way of asking? Well, it would just be, pass me the salt. You see, I would do that for certain other situations, but on the table... You know, when you're sitting at the table, you're being civilized, you're eating. But imagine that I was like in the middle of doing something. Imagine I'm trying to fix something and I need a screwdriver, you know, just turning your door. But I can't move from where I am. I might then say to my friend beside me, I might say to Craig, Craig, g- give me the screwdriver or uh, pass me the screwdriver because I'm in a hurry and it's not a meal time. So there I might use the direct form. Yeah, I agree. But at, at the table... You be careful. In British society at the table, even even with people you know, you're likely to at least add the word please, I think. And if you're sitting at a table with people you don't know very well, of course, you'd be more polite. So an indirect example would be, do you think you could pass me the salt, please? Do you agree with that? That's yeah. probably more for strangers. Yeah. The first time you're eating with them. So can you pass me the salt, please? Could be for people you know but you still want to be polite. And as Craig said, to elevate that to even more polite, do you think you could pass me the salt, please? Sounds even more polite. Although I have been at the table with my family and they've just said, pass the salt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pass the salt, that's yeah. it. Or, or, or sometimes maybe my mouth's full, I'm eating, it's true, and I might just say, and mm, point at something. So I point at salt. Mm. <laughs> more, more wine, more wine. Let's try one more. Direct request. I want help with this. I want help with this. Well, what about this? Would you mind helping me with this? Yeah, remember that gerund after would you mind? Would you mind helping me? Would you mind taking me? Would you mind giving me? I-N-G. Or we could use a tag. You couldn't help me with this, could you? Here's a direct one for you to change to indirect, Craig. Send us a voice message. Which is what we say at the end of the podcast. Could you possibly be so kind as to send us a voice message? Could you possibly be so kind as to send us a voice message? What about this one? Uh, Another direct request. Help me. An indirect. I wonder if you could please help me. The word please is optional, but if you add it, it's more polite. Or with rising intonation in a more simple expression. Can you please help me? Notice the up and down. Arriba y bajo. Can you please help me? So these are useful phrases when you're speaking, but maybe we can help listeners, Reza, with useful expressions in writing because sometimes you write an email and you want to make a polite request in the email. A very, very common and useful expression for that is, 
I would be grateful if you could, followed by the infinitive without to, the base form. For example, I would be grateful if you could send me further details. I would be grateful if you could send me the final cost of the product. Instead of using could, you can actually repeat the word would. And whenever I mention this to my students, they always say, hold on, you told us not to repeat would in a second conditional sentence. Well, yeah, and also use a variety of vocabulary and not repeat words all the time. That's true. So it kind of goes against what you're taught because second conditional sentence would be, I would be grateful if you sent me further details. So the past, because we have would is the result and the past sent, that's the condition. That's the two parts of a conditional sentence, right? I would be grateful if you sent me further details. But more polite than that and more common, actually, it's more common when you write is... I would be grateful if you would send me further details. So it's a special exception to the second conditional would in both parts of the conditional sentence in the if clause and the other clause. And here's a question for you. Now, imagine we're not doing an exam, a Cambridge exam. Imagine you are writing a formal email to another English speaker. Would you contract the would? Would you write I apostrophe D, I to be grateful? Or would you write every word separately in a formal email? Formal, every word separately. No contractions for me. What what do you think? I don't necessarily agree. I would probably abbreviate it even though it were a formal email. And I tell my students to write all the words in exams because that's what they are expected to do. However, personally, myself, I would contract it. Use formal language with contractions. Well, yeah, I yeah, I agree. For what I want to come across as neutral. So neither formal, particularly formal, nor informal. I might write, I'd be grateful if you would send me. So I'd so I'm not being extra formal there. So I might contract it. But if I if I definitely want to be formal and be sure about that, then I wouldn't contract it. Yeah. Instead of, for example, writing, I'd be really grateful, I'd emphasize the formality and say, I'd be extremely grateful if you'd. So I'd use contractions with more formal language like extremely. Well, if it isn't too much trouble, we would love to hear from you. So could you possibly send us a voice message to speakpipe, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com slash English podcast. That is the preferred way, our preferred way for you to send us voice communication. Reza, what about emails? If you don't want to do that, if you don't mind, we'd appreciate an email. You could send one to craig at englishpodcast.com or belfastreza at gmail.com. And could you possibly be so kind as to visit the Mansion Inglés online store? You can see lots of products for sale on the online store, including courses such as how to pass a job interview, which is only 12 euros. If you have a job interview coming up in the near future, go to store, S-T-O-R-E dot Mansion Inglés. Of course, if you are one of our lovely Patreon supporters, you do get that pass a job interview for free as a Patreon supporter. And please allow me to thank all of those Patreon supporters who are helping us by giving a donation every month. If you go to patreon.com slash English podcast, you can get further details and you can see a full list of all the people who'd help us. We haven't got time to mention everybody's name, but we will mention the names of our most recent patrons who've just recently joined us. They are Christian Garcia Magro, Raquel Sanchez, Peri Crespi Cabot, Antonio Murillo, Luis Lobo Martinez, Marina Rueda, Beatriz, and Joseph Girvant, or maybe Joseph Girvant, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Thank you to those new sponsors. A special thanks to Marina and Beatriz and Josep who have donated more than the minimum of $1 per month. So thank you very much. It's a dollar a month or $1.20 as a minimum to join the Patreon program and you get instant access to recent transcriptions of every word we say. What's next week, Reza? 
Palabras en inglés que vienen del español or words in English that come from Spanish. I'm really looking forward to speaking about that next week. Thank you very much for being with us this week. Until next time, it's goodbye from me. And bye-bye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. <laughs>